Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, major airlines are warning about more delays in the near future, but not because of weather. What is up with our weather? We've only dropped down to about 71 degrees this morning. The AC is working overtime in many South Texas homes on your Thursday, December 16th. Something doesn't jive there. There's some sort of weird disconnect with Mother Nature. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for waking up with us here on KSAT 12 and GMSA. Thanks for joining us. Yes, for now, it's not matching up. Maybe it will pretty soon. So when can we turn the AC back off, Mike Osterhage? Before you go to bed, or actually Saturday morning. So Saturday morning. It's going to be about 6, 7 o'clock in the morning when the front moves on through here. It'll stay very warm and humid up until then. So uh, yeah, it's going to feel like December. Should we just talk about Saturday? Sure. Sure. Now we got to talk about today. So, <laughs> yeah, it is uh, warm and humid out there. Lots of clouds. Same old song and dance that we've had the past couple of days. Uh, 71 here in town, 69 in Helotus, and 74 still at uh, Stinson. Again, to put it in perspective, the normal average low temperature is low 40s right now, 42 degrees to be exact. A ton of humidity out there. And we do have a fairly decent breeze right now. There may be a few hints of fog here and there. Just kind of keep a lookout, especially over in uh, portions of the hill country as the morning rolls on. Mountain Cedar really, really shot up yesterday. That despite the fact that we didn't have any big fronts move through or anything like that. So we are definitely in the, the heart of the season right now. And then of course we do have that big front coming through to shake up the trees on Saturday. More on that coming up this morning. Pretty much steady, lots of clouds out there. Maybe, you know, some mist is possible. A uh, patch or two of fog, especially out to the west. And then later on today, we're going to be up to 80. Record is 81. So we're going to be very close to it. A sprinkle or two out there. Same thing tomorrow. Then the front moves through. It'll feel much more like December and Christmas over the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph. Thank you, Mike. Bear County Sheriff says several gambling machines were pulled from a San Antonio home last night. Investigators think they were used in an illegal gambling operation. The case centers around a home on Tremlett and South Presa on the city's south side. Investigators also showed us where several gaming machines were lined up against the walls. The sheriff says drugs were also found inside the home and that prostitution may have been taking place there as well. Neighbors have been complaining for months before investigators were able to establish a case. Four people were arrested in that investigation. There's a number to call if you would like to report a similar situation in your neighborhood. And that number is 210-335-GANG. This morning, the major airlines here in the U.S. are warning about more delays in the near future. And it's not because of weather. It's because of wireless carriers rolling out 5G service. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Airline CEOs were on Capitol Hill Wednesday with a dire warning for travelers already fed up with delays and disruptions. They say a plan by Verizon and AT&T to offer 5G wireless service beginning next month could disrupt thousands of daily flights. The safety concerns uh, with aircraft and aviation are very real. They say 5G could interfere with sensitive electronics that help pilots land in bad weather at dozens of airports. The FAA is uncomfortable with the safety risk. To get around the problem, they say more flights will have to be diverted to other airports, which they say could cost passengers more than $1 billion in annual delays. The wireless industry accuses the airlines of fear-mongering, saying 5G is already operating in dozens of other countries without issues. You. They have no answers for you. They, they tell you that uh, nothing that we can do. Meanwhile, Senators Wednesday demanded CEOs answer for the hundreds of cancellations and delays that plagued airports this fall. We end up with airplanes in the wrong place, people in the wrong place. Um, so that was the, that was the driver of the vast majority of the cancellations. Taxpayers spent $54 billion bailing out the airline industry during the pandemic, but the CEOs say even with all that money, they were forced to shrink their staffs. And at least one senator demanded the airlines refund customers for flights canceled due to the pandemic or offer credits that don't expire. At a minimum, they just want a voucher that they can use whenever they want to. Uh, they shouldn't have to worry that in order to get the cash that they have uh, being used, that they have to jump on a flight in the next three months when the pandemic is now rising. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. A Los Angeles federal grand jury has charged a Texas oil company and two subsidiaries for an oil spill off the California coast in October. Federal prosecutors say that Houston-based Amplify Energy Corporation and its two subsidiaries that operate oil rigs and a pipeline off Long Beach were charged with a misdemeanor for illegally discharging oil. 
a ruptured pipeline that is believed to have been caused when a cargo ship snagged with an anchor and spilling it about 25,000 gallons of crude oil. U.S. prosecutors said the companies were negligent six ways, including failing to respond to eight leak detection system alarms over a 13 hour period that should have alerted them to the spill and would have minimized the damage. A Florida school district will pay more than $26 million to the families of those killed and wounded in the Parkland shooting massacre. 17 people were killed in February of 2018 when a gunman opened fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Board members for the Broward County Public Schools have unanimously approved the settlement. Last month, the Justice Department reached a settlement with victims' families for a reported $127.5 billion. Nicholas Cruz, who pleaded guilty to the shooting, is now facing the death penalty. Urban Meyer's tumultuous NFL tenure has ended after just 13 games. That's after the Jacksonville Jaguars fired him last night because of an accumulation of missteps. Owner Shad Khan made the move hours after ex-Jaguars player Josh Lambeau told a Florida newspaper Meyer kicked him during practice back in August. It was the latest embarrassment for the three-time national championship winning college coach who failed miserably to make the transition to the NFL. And time now, 436 and 71 degrees out there. Still ahead, the colder weather is coming back soon. We're checking out some of the best hoodies and slippers that can make staying warm a little bit more fashionable. Also up next, it was not a great night for the San Antonio Spurs. We're going to have some of the highlights coming up. And outside with live cam, yeah, waiting on that return of some cooler weather. If you love warm weather, you're loving the next couple of days. We'll get an update on your Thursday and your weekend forecast. Much more to come right here on TMSA. Time for a look at morning sports. The Spurs were home last night to face the Charlotte Hornets. First quarter, Miles Bridges sinks a three, and the Hornets take the lead early. Charlotte made 10 of 15 threes and led 46-31 after one. Didn't get much better for, from there for the Spurs. Spurs did rally for a bit, closing within nine points in the second quarter. However, Charlotte's Gordon Hayward scored a season-high 41 points. Hornets never trailed in a 131-115 victory over San Antonio. Spurs had six players score double figures, but couldn't keep up with Charlotte. Ben Forbes scored 25 points. Keldon Johnson, 21. Spurs closed a five-game homestand at 3-2. and two. San Antonio has trailed by double digits in 17 of 27 games this season. There's no excuse, to be honest with you. That's, it should never be the case. No matter how hot they were, whatever you want to say, there's no excuse. Like, should have been more physical, had more effort, been more focused. It just wasn't a good night defensively for us at all. Their best offense in the league, if you look at the numbers, so... Um, just didn't come out ready to go and it made us pay. Spurs have not had a winning home record this season since winning their season opener. Spurs will hit the road to play the Utah Jazz tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. The UIL State Football Championships underway. The 15-0 Shiner Comanches facing the 15-0 Holly Bearcats for the Class 2A Division I title at AT&T Stadium yesterday. Last second, late second quarter, handoff goes to Doug Brooks. He runs left, slips a tackle, and breaks off a 28-yard touchdown, making it 21-12 Shiner at the half. Later, quarterback uh, Drew Wenske tosses it back to Doug Brooks. He goes for a 10-yard touchdown run, his third of the game. In the end, Shiner defends their state title 47-12 back-to-back state champions. Congratulations, Shiner. The Valero Alamo Bowl has awarded more than $1 million in scholarships to a record 160 San Antonio high school and college students via two programs. The first 660,000 will be split between a record 88 winners of the Valero Alamo Bowl Student Athlete Scholarship winners. The students included at least one winner from every San Antonio public school and well-established private schools. I was really excited because I usually tend to worry about money going to college and knowing that I have this money now, it really helps me out. I was nervous. I didn't really think about it that much. I, when I got it at the mail, I was really surprised. But I'm just super grateful for Valero Bowl for giving me the scholarship. And congratulations from us to all the scholarship recipients. Yeah, congrats. And time now, 442 and about 71 degrees out there. With the cold coming back soon, you need a fashionable way to stay warm. Up next, ways you can stay cozy in style.
When the weather gets colder for a lot of folks, it's nice to stay warm with a soft hoodie and cozy slippers. And to help with your Christmas shopping, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris has a few suggestions from folks who put them to the comfy test. Nothing says cozy like a favorite hoodie. Perry Sanichote wants one that's warm and functional. But I also want to look cool in it. So she left the Consumer Reports lab for the streets, trying several from labels like American Giant, Nike, H&M, Adidas, and Champion. Besides checking warmth... I also noted how well they were made by looking at all the seams and also what they were made of. And of course, comfort, fit, and the care instructions. This $40 H&M hoodie says it requires line drying or dry cleaning. On the high end, she tried the nearly $100 Yeezy, Kanye West brand. It is double lined throughout, which is something you rarely ever see. So that made it really, really warm, like about as warm as a coat. It's also sold out at the Gap. Instead, she says consider the American Giant Classic, all cotton and made in the USA. And while this $60 champion isn't 100% cotton, Perry found it still one of the best options. Your feet like to be cozy too, so Consumer Reports gave slippers a test run, including L.L. Bean's Wicked Good Moccasins, Glarups, and Lined Crocs. These Galerops got high scores from all of the slipper pickers. They're warm, breathable, and $100. To spendy, they suggest these Bombas for $40. For slippers, they say natural materials are best. Synthetics uh, can be great, but uh, your feet might get a little sweaty in them and they won't last as long. If you tend to do chores in your slippers, they say it's hard to beat Crocs classic lined clogs. Maybe not high fashion, but... We were surprised by how comfortable they were and how much we liked them. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Yeah, I got my son some lined clogs last oh. year and he's like, those are the ugliest things I've ever seen and oh my God, are they comfortable. <laughs> so he wears them. Lined Crocs, yeah. Yeah. just like in Marilyn's report. They're great. Mm-hmm. And Crocs with socks, too. Crocs with socks. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. I want to see that. If you're doing that look, I, we want to see it. <laughs> That's for at, the I've never done that look. before. It's really comfortable. I, I'm not admitting to anything. I just would love to see a picture <laughs> of you wearing it. Well, didn't it happen you unless you took a picture. No, it wouldn't. I, but anyway, yeah. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Michael. What? That's okay. adorable, man. Uh, yesterday, had a couple little breaks of the clouds here and there, and we may see, you know, one or two of them. The sun actually did pop out a little bit, so maybe not completely overcast, guys, but just count on a whole bunch of clo clo clogs. Clouds again today. See, <laughs> anyway, uh, same situation starting off this morning. Lots of clouds and uh, very warm, very humid. Moisture continues to pump on in here from the uh, southwest. We're not seeing a whole lot of fog right now because once again, we do have a fairly decent breeze, sort of like yesterday, but just kind of be on the lookout, especially out in portions of the hill country this morning for some of that uh, fog to form up. And as far as the computer model, we, you know, we'll see a couple little sprinkly showers here and there. There's actually a bit of a kind of a front that's going to sort of lie in the area. This is not the big one we're talking about, but this may again generate one or two little sprinkly showers around the area today. Same thing tomorrow and again a peak of sunshine here or there. Temperatures are going to be up close to record high temperatures. The record tomorrow is 81. Excuse me. Today is 81 82 tomorrow forecasting 80 for both days. So it's going to be really really close to that and of course, after starting off right around 70 both mornings. So again, tomorrow afternoon, chance for a couple of stray showers. Then we get into tomorrow night and Saturday. That's when the front starts working its way through here. And it looks like timing of it's going to be just before sunrise on Saturday as it moves on through. So it'll be very, very warm and humid. Still need the air conditioning overnight most of the evening, Friday night into Saturday. And then that uh, front will come through. Temperature is going to be dropping like a rock down to 50, maybe even upper 40s. Very windy and a good chance for rain, showers and thunderstorms. That's going to be primarily the first portion of the day. Then that's going to start to kind of lull a little bit. Then we get another disturbance moving across here, and that's going to uh, give us better rain chances or once again rain chances, I should say, later Sunday overnight and into the first part of the day on Monday. And of course, the humidity is going to be dropping off like a rock as we go on into the, uh, the weekend, starting to bounce back a little bit once we get into the first part of next week. We are going to be clearing out, though, by later in the day Monday. It looks like Tuesday and Wednesday. More sunshine for the official start of winter. 76 degrees, cloudy, uh, you know, a sprinkle or two and one or two peaks of sunshine as well, but primarily cloudy skies, very warm, very humid out there, 80 high temperature. Again, the record is 81. 
you get a little more sunshine and obviously that record may be in jeopardy. Same thing tomorrow. Then we have the front moving on through here and it is going to be windy. Temperatures will drop down at least about 20 degrees throughout the course of the probably early morning hours. I think by the time we even hit noon, it's going to be really, really kind of raw out there with rain, showers, thunderstorms. Um, yeah, good. Just kind of hunker down kind of weather and then uh, rain will start to taper off late in the day Saturday, then refire later in the day on Sunday. So we'll see that bit of a reprieve overnight Saturday into Sunday and then uh, lingering into early Monday. And you know, we're getting close enough now. We're going to ask you how Christmas is shaping up and we don't we're not expecting a pin right for right. right now. Temperatures are looking like normals averages about mid 60s. So it's mid and upper 60s okay. as it okay. looks right now. So at or slightly on the warm side of seasonable normals, but not 80. No, not yet. Or no, <laughs> nothing like that. Okay. The, way this, the way this fall's going. <laughs> we could bust 90 by New Year's. Hopefully not. Hey, 1996, oh, February, stop. what, 21st? Oh, 100. my ghoster hate stop. 451, about 71 Same. degrees. And still ahead, the return of McGruber, what the actors are saying about the character's new series. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 293, Fireball 6. Your daily four numbers, 8068, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 2, 7, 8, 10, 32, and Lotto, Texas, 10, 32, 33, 41, 45, 53. Your Powerball numbers, 19, 20, 40, 42, 59, Powerball 15, Power Play 3. Good luck. A new documentary debuts tonight on HBO and HBO Max Plus. MacGruber is back, but not by popular demand. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A new documentary aims to reveal a lot about the dreams and demons that drove Juice World, the rapper who died of an accidental drug overdose two years ago in Chicago. Tommy Oliver directed the doc, telling me he was just a casual fan when he started on the project. I learned so much of just how sweet of a person he was and that he is the goat freestyler or none and that he's one of the best artists of all time juice world into the abyss premieres tonight on hbo and hbo max also on today it's the return of mcgruber who let the dog out the snl parody was a bomb at the box office as a film 11 years ago something stars will forte and kristen wig are well aware of we, we didn't make this because it was the world was calling oh no out no one it. asked for it but forte says they had so much fun making the film that they always wanted to revisit it the mcgruber revival now a series for peacock streaming today Big bucks for an unreleased Whitney Houston song. It sold this week at auction for $999,999. It's in the form of an NFT, the song recorded by Houston when she was just 17. No word yet who bought it or if that person will ever make the song public for the world to hear. And happy birthday to Jessica Jones. Actor Kristen Ritter is 40 today, while ZZ Top's Billy Gibbons is 72. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 456 and about 71 degrees. Still ahead on the morning show, President Biden reacts to the devastation left behind by the tornadoes in Kentucky. What the National Weather Service is now saying about those storms. Plus details on a major car manufacturer's road monitoring system that can find and fix faded lane marks. And we're checking Transguide right now. We've got a stalled uh, big rig right there on that last shot. There's 281 and Nakoma. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. He's warming up and we'll have an update coming up here at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news headlines this morning, a woman is dead following a shooting on San Antonio's east side. We have details coming up. President Biden has touched down in Mayfield. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Kentucky. Coming up, his message to survivors of the storm. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 71 degrees. It does not feel like Christmas yet. 
And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. That is December 16th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you're having a great week so far. I hope you're getting all the errands done so maybe you can enjoy Christmas next week. Very warm out there. That trend continues for a little while longer. Mike has the latest on our next uh, pocket of colder air in South Texas. Yeah, it's going to feel like Christmas this weekend, uh, but right now it's feeling more like summer basically and we are looking at record high temperatures or really close to them later on today as well as tomorrow 71 right now and then look at that bottom number dew point of 67 a ton of humidity out there but we do have once again a fairly decent breeze like yesterday and that's what's helping to prevent some fog watch it in portions of the hill country though uh, later on this morning so it is going to be you know, once again you know we're not going to move all that much with temperatures just because we do have such a warm start almost 30 above normal right now and we're going to hit 80 for a high temperature. The record is 81, so it's obviously going to be a really, really close call. The aquifer yesterday did not change, and the allergens, bunch of mountain cedar moved on in here. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when that big front moves through early Saturday, if that's really going to shake up those trees. So once again, we've got a good breeze this morning, and it won't be, I don't think, as windy as yesterday, but at least this is helping to keep some of that fog from forming up as of yet. But if, once the winds die down with all this humidity, we may see some trying to form. So just kind of keep that in mind throughout the rest of the morning. So warm, humid, um, you know, even a speck of mist out there is going to be possible. One or two little sprinkles. I know we had a couple of sprinkles around just about uh, noontime early afternoon yesterday and plenty of clouds, yeah, a couple of peaks of sunshine as well thrown on in here. And tomorrow, more of the same. Again, near record high temperature. The record tomorrow is 82 degrees. Then the front moves through late tomorrow night. We're going to start to see a line of rain, showers and thunderstorms move through here. The week, the front comes in about uh, probably right before sunrise Saturday morning. Temperatures are going to be dropping down. Good rain chances and then sort of a lull and then more rain chances to finish up the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What is going on? Not a whole lot, Mike. As we take a look at Transguide I-10 at Frio, we have traffic that's moving through there pretty easy and not a lot of folks out there this morning. Uh, let's take a closer look at Transguide, see how things are shaping up for this Thursday. Right now, 35 at Ebrothel, still pretty quiet out there. Again, we see just a few folks. Uh, issues have been pretty minimal at this time, but keep in mind it is still very early on. So, of course, we're not seeing a whole lot of activity out there, but still things to be on the lookout for. Earlier, we talked about a stall off of US 90. You saw that big rig there. Let's go ahead and take you to the map, see where that's at, so that way you can make sure you drive accordingly through that area. Uh, that's being detected off US 90 eastbound right at Zaza Mora. Right now, we're not seeing any delays with traffic, but again, something to be on the lookout for that looks like it could possibly be at the exit ramp there. Uh, taking a jump up here, we're seeing that same trend continue off Loop 410 eastbound at Ingram Road. No traffic that's experiencing any trouble there through that area. Just make sure you give that driver plenty of room. Uh, as we take a jump up here, though, 281 southbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. Now, there's some restricted flow there, meaning that some vehicles are traveling a little slower than normal. That's because a vehicle fire was detected out there earlier in the morning. However, it does look like that may have just cleared out. Let's take a wider look at the map because we are seeing uh, that the map is showing that we got a lot of open lanes, so great way to start the new morning. And if you're traveling into San Antonio, these inbound times are looking pretty good as well. 24 minutes from I-10 in Bernie, 27, 281 in Bulverde, and 25 from 35 in New Braunfels. Let's take one look at Transguide. Again, quiet starts. We'll talk more construction coming up in the next few minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say one woman is dead after a shooting on the city's east side overnight. It happened in the 1300 block of Hayes Street near North New Braunfels Avenue. Police say several people were hanging out in the street after leaving a bar when someone fired a single shot. A woman in her 30s was hit and was later pronounced dead at the scene. Detectives are now investigating more details into what led up to that shooting. This morning, there's new information about the deadly tornadoes that ripped through parts of the Midwest. National Weather Service now confirming one of the tornadoes was a high-end EF4. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Mayfield with the latest. New information regarding the stream of tornadoes that devastated parts of the Midwest. The National Weather Service confirming that an EF4 tornado tore through parts of western Kentucky 128 miles long, the second most intense designation a tornado can receive.
Drone footage over Mayfield highlighting the twister's perilous path with peak winds up to 190 miles per hour. As the region braces for more heavy rain, President Biden on a walking tour in Kentucky surveying the damage in Mayfield and Dawson Springs. Biden meeting with families and sharing a solemn prayer with local faith leaders. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir breaking down as he introduced the president. But I never thought in my life I'd be able to introduce a president and I wish there were different circumstances. The president acknowledging the pain on the ground. I met one couple on the way up said they're still looking for four of their friends. They don't know where they are. And those who lost someone, there's no words for the pain of losing someone. A lot of us know it. So far, 600 National Guard members have been deployed in over 18 hard-hit counties. FEMA providing 61 generators, over 38,000 gallons of water, 24,000 meals, and tens of thousands of cots and blankets. Biden also announcing the federal government will cover 100 percent of the cost of all emergency work for the next 30 days. It includes debris removal, cost of overtime and law enforcement, emergency service personnel, and shelter. No one's walking away. We're in this for the long haul. And overnight, the National Weather Service is confirming a tornado has touched down in Minnesota, the first ever December tornado in the region. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. And here at home, our own neighbors are helping in the recovery efforts in the Midwest. A phone bank held at the KSET studios yesterday, taking donations for the Red Cross. And so far, we have just seen over $7,000 raised with more donations still being counted. All that money goes directly to the tornado relief efforts. There are two ways you can donate. You can visit redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. In morning headlines, Harvey Weinstein is trying to get his sex abuse conviction overturned. The movie mogul is serving a 23-year prison sentence after being convicted in New York of first-degree criminal sexual acts and third-degree rape charges. But now, Weinstein's lawyers have asked a panel of appeals court judges to reverse the conviction because of issues with a juror and the judge who oversaw the case. The appeal says one juror lied to the court about a book she was writing that involved predatory men also accuses a judge of admitting to an overwhelming amount of what was referred to as bad evidence to jurors. The panel of judges is expected to make a written decision on whether to vacate his conviction or not. The U.S. Navy will soon start discharging troops who do not get vaccinated against COVID-19. Officials say it will happen as soon as possible. Sailors who previously refused but have since changed their minds will be able to remain in uniform. According to last week's information, the Navy had just over 5,700 sailors who haven't been vaccinated. Roughly half of them are asking for an exemption due to religious beliefs. The Navy says no one will be discharged while these requests are pending. The Army's deadline for the vaccination has also passed and the majority of the force is either fully or partially vaccinated. The Air Force has discharged 27 service members who would not get vaccinated. Santa's sleigh may not be the only thing gliding through the air this Christmas Eve. NASA has delayed plans to launch its new generation of space telescopes until December 24th. The James Webb Space Telescope will succeed the Hubble Space Telescope as the world's most powerful complex space observatory. It was supposed to launch December 22nd, but NASA says there is a communication issue between the telescope and the launch system. Teams are now working on the issue. This is not the first delay for the telescope. It was initially supposed to launch in 2018, but the pandemic and technical challenges since then have shifted some of those plans. Time now, 508 and 71 degrees out there. Still ahead, we'll tell you about a major car maker's plans to help spot faded lane markers on the highway. Also next, scammers are targeting people looking for jobs right here in San Antonio. We're gonna tell you what you need to know to look out for so you don't lose valuable time and money. Outside with live cam, very warm for a little bit longer and then changes yet again. Just weird for December 16th. Much more on the forecast and we'll check back in with Stephen coming up. 12 minutes past the hour. Welcome back. If you're looking for a job, be careful. That's because right now employment scams are one of the number one things being reported to this in San Antonio to the Better Business Bureau. The BBB says scammers are doing their homework and getting more creative, victimizing families who are looking to make ends meet. Although you may be searching for a job on a legitimate website, experts say to look for a requisition number or job ID on the actual posting to vet the company and the recruiter. Also, be leery if you're automatically hired for a position and stay away from jobs that require gift cards or information about your personal bank account. 
the work always sounds too good to be true. In other words, um, it's easy for you to go to any retailer, any store, load up gift cards and transfer the money, and then it's gone. It's just like cash in the wind. Zero to 2% of the time do we see people get any money back or any relief from giving money via gift cards. Um, it's just highly untraceable. And users can track scans and should report problems if they come across any to the Better Business Bureau and Federal Trade Commission. We have those links listed on our website at ksat.com. Now 513, 71 degrees. And still ahead why Apple is delaying its full office reopening and giving every employee a bonus. And can you guess how many Minecraft videos are now on YouTube? We have the answer next. Such a bright crystal gift set. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. With Mucinex Night Shift, you've got powerful relief from your worst nighttime cold and flu symptoms. So grab Night Shift to fight your symptoms, get your Z's, and get back to your rhythm. The relief you need, the cash you want. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Goldfund. Champion your skin. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's reaction to the new COVID surge. The company is now saying corporate employees will return to the office on a date yet to be determined. Workers were supposed to go back February 1st. Apple is also giving every employee $1,000 for work at home expenses. Honda is testing a new system that could help in repairing the nation's crumbling infrastructure. It's designed to detect faded lane markers and other road damage using a car's existing cameras and navigation system. The data will be up uploaded to alert transportation departments about potential hazards. And finally, a big milestone for Minecraft videos on YouTube. All videos about the game on the site have collectively been watched over one trillion times. YouTube notes if each one of those were views were one second long, they would add up to over 30,000 years. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Time check, 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos about maybe a stalled vehicle there at Highway 90. Yeah, it looks like a stalled big rig. Uh, we had talked about this a little bit earlier. And it's still out there. This looks like it's right at the exit ramp. This is a shot from US 90 at Nogalitos. Uh, but check this out. It looks like we do have a pedestrian also near in that area. So watch out for that. It looks like he's standing right in the grassy median. It's still very dark outside and uh, obviously not a safe place to be. So we're hoping that this driver can receive some assistance pretty soon. But let's check out the map and see how that's looking right now because that is a tech in the eastbound lanes of US 90. Again, that was a shot at Trans Guide, but right now Texas has this listed at Zazamora. So watch out for that, that big rig, and of course, watch out for that pedestrian that is standing along that vehicle. So let's take a look around town, see how things are also shaping up, because we did have this uh, restricted flow that's still going on off 281 southbound at Thousand Oaks Drive. I was checking out the Trans Guide cameras. There's a few more vehicles uh, traveling along 281, so I'm not sure if that's impacting that, but of course, always be on the lookout and make sure that you're planning accordingly and as I mentioned, construction that's still going on here. Some road work off eastbound. The 1604 eastbound frontage road has led to a lane closure out there. It's been going on for quite a while now from Chase Hill Boulevard to John Peace Boulevard uh, from 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. But the good news is that should be wrapping today. So hopefully we'll see some more traffic moving there, uh, moving through there pretty easily. But taking a wider look at the map, doesn't look like we have many problems out on the road just yet. But of course, we're going to keep our eyes on this situation again off US 90 at Nogalitos guys. Thank you for the update, Stephen. And it still feels like summer. <laughs> Yeah. For now. yeah, yeah, it feels like I mean, these are numbers right now. The low temperatures right now are about what they are in approximately late July, early August. So because our, our highest normal low temperatures are usually about 73 degrees in the, uh, the early to middle part of August. OK, you want to just a nice view. Head out to the west. Hickaboo Canyon State Park out there. Absolutely beautiful. Few colors are showing up and Boy, that landscape is just gorgeous. Thank you very much for that picture. Lots of clouds hanging around here. And, you know, yesterday we had basically cloudy skies 
all through about mid afternoon, a couple of peaks of sunshine here and there. I think we see the same thing again today. There are a couple of hints of fog. Casterville, Uvalde right now. That's it. Uh, Eagle Pass and Victoria, obviously a little bit down there along the coastal plain. Watch out. We, we do have a fairly decent breeze right now, but just watch out for some fog to try to form up, especially in parts of the hill country this morning. So dew points, of course, humidity remains very, very high. That is not going to be changing throughout the day and and uh, throughout the day tomorrow as well. So we'll start off once again about 70, maybe some mist here and there. A couple of little sprinkly showers going to be possible. Then we will start to see the changes not early, early morning, like right after midnight Saturday morning, but by a, about sunrise or so is when that front's going to be moving through here, which this computer model does indicate again today a sprinkly shower or two. You know, one or two of them. Same thing with one or two peaks of sunshine thrown on in. Same thing tomorrow. Uh, a couple little sprinkly showers. Then we get into the late evening hours and overnight, and that's when we'll start to see the front working its way on through here. So this is about again right around sunrise, just before that Saturday morning showers. Even a couple of thunderstorms are going to be developing, and it's going to turn windy. Temperatures will be dropping pretty substantially. We'll go from about 70 down to 50 fairly quickly by I think uh, at least about noon on Saturday and right now plenty of clouds, maybe a couple of sprinkles well off to the east. That's about it. Big newsmaker yesterday, of course, was the fact the first ever tornado in uh, Minnesota in the month of December. More severe weather up there, a huge storm system, and there's really, really cold air obviously in behind this big clash of air masses uh, right across the country. Uh, we will get a little taste of that eventually, but once again, we're not going to be seeing anything just dropping straight down out of the north as far as the upper level steering winds. We get these uh, shallow fronts moving on through here and that low is pretty much going to be the rainmaker over the weekend. It's going to throw some energy in here as the front moves through and then it will slide across, giving us another rain chance later in the day on Sunday. 76 today at noon clouds. You know, again, a sprinkle or two is possible today. Same thing uh, later on this afternoon. 80 high temperature. The records 81. Going to be a real close call. Same thing tomorrow. The record is 82 degrees. Front moves through early on Saturday and temperatures will really be dropping down throughout the day. Uh, windy, you know, just wet, kind of raw sort of a day. Love it. And 52 on Sunday. <laughs> Rain's going to start to taper off late in the day Saturday and then pick back up about mid to latter portion of the day Sunday into early, early Monday. I was planning ahead for the weekend weather to stay in, and I bought one of those baked potato soup kits Ooh, nice. to make that on Sunday or Saturday or Sunday, either day. Either day. Either day. Sunday. Either day. Yeah. 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 Stick it stick it on the stove Saturday during the day so it just... That sounds good. Yeah. Sounds make good. it on Sunday so you bring leftovers on Monday. I can do that, too. Yeah, either one. It makes pretty healthy just portion. Just invite us over Saturday evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've gone too far, Mike. If, if he was a nice guy. <laughs> Come to my house and bring it to me. <laughs> what, what's to come to your house and okay? Now you have gone too far. 524, about 71 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Nicole Kinman talks about her being the Ricardo's role. Plus, Nic Nicholas Cage gets to play himself. Nicole Kidman and Nicolas Cage kick off the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Rick Damagella with the Hollywood Minute. Sorry, I got lost for a second. Nicole's vocal challenge. Nicole Kidman stars as TV legend Lucille Ball in the biopic Being the Ricardos and explains director Aaron Sorkin had to prep her on getting the I Love Lucy star's voice just right. He goes, I need the voice to be, she's a smoker, a heavy smoker, and she speaks directly and she speaks rapidly and she has a deep, so pretty much an octave lower. Is this supposed to be me? It's Grotesque. I'll give you 20,000 for it. Nicolas Cage plays Nicolas Cage. The actor stars as a cash strapped version of himself in the new action packed comedy, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. This is your first look at the film, which sees Cage taking a paying gig to entertain an obsessive fan for their birthday. It is set to arrive in theaters in April. This is messy. You are messy. Your brain is broke. Zola leads the pack. The dark crime comedy nabbed the most nominations for the 2022 Film Independent Spirit Awards. It earned a spot in seven categories, including Best Feature. We'll find out who wins when the trophies are handed out March 6th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
528 now down to 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we'll have new information on how vaccines are faring against Omicron, including news from doctors on the need for variant-specific vaccines. Plus, we'll tell you why Kraft says it'll pay you not to make a cheesecake for the holidays. A long night of trying to dodge police ends with a morning in jail for four men. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on that story coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's Thursday and we're a little closer for it to feel like December. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, December 16th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you're okay with the warm weather, enjoy today and possibly tomorrow. But if you like the cold weather, wait for the weekend. The weekend. Yes, Mike and our weather team still talking about changes afoot as we head into this weekend before Christmas. Yes, indeed. And about the time when you, uh, if you sleep in a little bit on Saturday morning, when you wake up, it is uh, going to be much colder because the front's going to be moving through here. Looks like just before sunrise on Saturday. Ahead of that, though, we're going to be flirting with record high temperatures later on today. We're starting off again about 30 degrees above normal. 67 is the dew points, so a lot of humidity out there. We do have somewhat of a breeze, so that's helping to prevent, like yesterday, prevent a lot of fog from forming up. But there are hints of it. Castorville, uh, you Valley, just you know, a little bit here and there. Same thing over there toward Eagle Pass and then down along the coastal plain. And just kind of keep an eye out because Winds slacking off, and then you're going to see maybe some of that fog to try and uh, form up. So that'll be something to just keep an eye on. Mountain Cedar really, really shot up yesterday, even despite the fact we didn't have any big fronts moving on through here. Mold is on the low side, so wait and see what happens with the uh, big front moving through on Saturday, shaking up those Mountain Cedar trees. Basically cloudy skies again. A couple of peaks of sunshine here and there. 80 high temperature. 81 is the record. So obviously we're going to be very close to it. A couple of sprinkles again are going to be possible. A little mist this morning. Then looks like a overall a fairly wet weekend is going to be kind of bone chilling sort of weekend. Just absolutely wonderful. How long will it last? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Anything going on, sir? No, Mike. Right now, thankfully, it has been a very quiet start to the morning, but it's 530, so we can't expect that the roads are going to be pretty quiet at this hour, but nonetheless, a good way to start this day. Let's go ahead and take a look right now, see how things are looking around town. 35 at Main, 35 at 410. We're seeing traffic moving, but uh, a lot of these shots show that the lanes are pretty quiet. I mean, let's take a look there. 37 at Carolina. I don't think I see too many vehicles out there, but uh, again, great way to start the day. However, some things to keep in mind. We still have that big rig out off US 90 and it's not impacting traffic just yet, but if you're driving through that area, let's see where that's at because it's still detected in those eastbound lanes. It looks like it could possibly be at the exit ramp again, right at Zazamora. Uh, we're not seeing any delays with traffic at this hour, so that's some good news. But if you're traveling into San Antonio, perhaps from Canada, Castroville, you want to make sure you're on the lookout for something like that because that could pose a problem if you're not careful. Uh, let's take a look up here because we still have another stall popping up off I-10 westbound at Fresno Drive, not causing any issues, but I really want to take your attention a little bit further up here to 281 uh, southbound at Thousand Oaks. We've been talking about this restricted flow, meaning that traffic is moving a little slowly through that area, but based on what we're seeing through that map, the lanes are still pretty green, so that's some good news there. Wider look at our map does show the morning is off to a quiet start. As I mentioned, not too bad. And if you're traveling into San Antonio, pretty much green across the board. You're not going to encounter any delays if you're coming in from Seguin on I-10, 29 minutes, 22 from Lavernia on 87 and 28 on coming in from Floresville. Quiet start means we get to talk more construction. That's going to be coming up in the next few minutes. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police say they tried to run and hide, but none of that worked for four men. Officers caught up with them in a west side neighborhood, and that was after a chase that started in Kirby. Katrina Weber is live where it ended on Loma Park Street, not far from St. Mary's University. And Katrina, we understand police did not exactly have an easy time taking them into custody. No, they definitely did not. Now, police say that this took hours and involved shots fired by a neighbor here, threats from the police dog and even the use of a drone. The San Antonio police say that they found those suspects hiding behind and under a home here in the 200 block of Loma Park. They finally got them all into custody around one this morning, although those men had been wanted since late last night. This started with the chase in Kirby around nine o'clock. Police say officers in that city had spotted people in two cars shooting at each other. SAPD's helicopter eventually picked up that pursuit and followed one of the cars here to the west side. 
Police say while the suspects were trying to hide in one backyard, a homeowner fired warning shots. Officers also deployed a drone at one point and sent in a canine to get those men out. Now, after all of those miles and hours spent on the run, police finally did get those men into custody. They are in jail right now, facing charges that will probably include evading arrest. And it seems the people in that uh, second car involved in that original chase did get away. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Other headlines this morning, at least 36 states are now reporting cases of the Omicron coronavirus variant. CNN's Brett Conway has new information on how the vaccines are faring against it. Omicron is a worry. You have to take it very seriously. The vulnerable people are the people who have not been vaccinated. For those who are vaccinated, you still are fairly highly protected against severe illness, so that's good. But even if you had two doses of vaccine, protection against mild illness isn't as good. Data is still coming in on vaccines versus the Omicron variant. For the two-dose Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, a study from South Africa suggests it's 33% effective at preventing Omicron. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says a booster offers up to 75% protection against symptomatic infection. And that same South African study on Pfizer also showed vaccinated adults were less likely to be hospitalized. With Moderna, a U.S. study that hasn't been peer-reviewed yet suggests the two-dose vaccine's ability to neutralize Omicron was between 49 and 84 times lower than when it faced an earlier variant. But a booster dose may substantially reduce this risk. Another U.S. study, also not peer-reviewed yet, reported the Omicron variant is markedly resistant to all three of the country's vaccines, including Johnson & Johnson's. Health experts say that's where boosters come in. Boost that immunity for at least a period of time because you're not going to be protected as well against mild illness over time. We have the tools to be able to blunt this. We just need to implement them. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And what could be the oldest globe ever to go on auction is being put up for sale today in London. Believed to have originated around 1550, the globe depicts the world before the entire continent of Australia was known to exist. The priceless artifact also features the Greek god Triton, as well as mythical sea monsters. It is one of the earliest terrestrial globes known to exist and surfaced among treasures rescued from the chaos of World War II. The starting price at auction is expected to be around 26 thousand dollars it's beautiful yeah it's very nice it definitely looks like a, a high-priced antique yes uh very interesting to see uh who will be the new owner do you think they take a payment plan <laughs> for forever <laughs> we're gonna all chip in yeah <laughs> but who gets the gift 530 mike merry christmas Welcome. <laughs> he would love it. 538, about 70 degrees. And still ahead, a nonprofit unveiling just how much it costs for uninsured patients to stay in a hospital due to COVID. AAA expects more than 6 million Americans to fly to holiday destinations in the next couple of weeks. What top airline executives are saying to lawmakers about recent flight disruptions and whether it could happen again? And taking a look outside with live hands, 70 degrees, not too bad. It's going to warm up a little bit more today, but this weekend will be looking a little different. We'll be right back. Lawmakers in Washington questioning major airline executives about recent flight disruptions. CNN's Kara Kefa looks at what might cloud your holiday flight plan. Heading into a busy stretch, senators asking top U.S. airline executives about how they've used $54 billion in federal pandemic relief to keep passengers moving. We want the December holiday season for travelers to go well, so this is why we're having the hearing. AAA expects more than 6 million Americans to fly between December 23rd and January 2nd, a 184% increase over 2020 and approaching pre-pandemic levels. You're going to have long lines at the airport. Uh, you're, it's, it's just going to feel like a pre-pandemic holiday travel period. It's going to feel a lot like 2019. How the major airlines have positioned themselves for that was in focus on Capitol Hill. We just need to make sure that we don't overschedule the airline relative to the people resources that we have. Consumer Reports advocacy. Aviation advisor Bill McGee worked in flight operations and says as traffic rebounds, airlines are leaving too little room for the unexpected. There used to be a time where there were spare aircraft, spare crews. Now the airlines are cost cutting. Well, OK, if everything goes well, hopefully all the flights will get out. 
But then when one thing goes wrong, that's why now it just dominoes. He suggests early morning flights before any disruptions can mount. The first flights of the day have the greatest chance statistically of getting there on time and the last flights of the day have the worst chance. Know how to contact an airline via smartphone for itinerary changes at the gate before everyone else rushes the agent. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kefa in Washington. Time check now 543, still about 70 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society with a very special pet that needs a new home. Oh, look at the outfit. No. Well, if you were looking for a little baby, maybe to fill your stocking, <laughs> you know, the Humane Society has one. Who is that little I one? I do. I have the perfect little baby for you. This is Dasher. So Dasher is a four-month-old little terrier mix. Uh, Look. Oh, he'd be perfect. And, and the little jammies, if they were. Yes. Say, I he does. Button, so. <laughs> Oh, he, yes, he stayed up and partied, so he's he's ready to go home. But also remember, if it's going to be something for Christmas, this is not just you know this lasts for right. A few it years, is though, that's the thing. Puppy, yes, you know, yes. 10, so do your research. Commitment. Make sure it's the right fit. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Great home. Also, if you get a little puppy, you've got some great things that you can pick up. Yes, as well. you can come see us. So we have these beautiful pet beds that are nice uh, for puppies and cats and kittens. Uh, we have a wonderful volunteer that donates these to us, and then we sell them. So come on by, get something to go underneath the tree for your little furry friend. Um, that will love it and be there forever. He's eyeballing this thing. Is I know. He's like, I him. want to go in this bed <laughs> and go to sleep. Up on that one, so. <laughs> well, if you want to do a little shopping for some uh, gifts for your little furry yeah. friend or a furry friend, head on over to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society over there at 40 4 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. In your morning consumer headlines, for those without insurance, getting hospitalized for COVID-19 can be financially devastating. The price tag for those patients likely to be at least $25,000 and could be as high as $350,000. That's according to a nonprofit that keeps watch on health care costs. Researchers say the average hospital stay for complex COVID cases fell from 13 days in April 2020 down to seven days this past July. Kraft is having trouble making enough cream cheese to keep store shelves filled this year, so the company wants to pay you not to buy it for your cheesecake. Participants register on a special website this Friday and Saturday, and Kraft will pick up to 18,000 winners. Those people will be able to submit receipts for ingredients used to make some other type of holiday treat or dessert and be reimbursed up to $20. Kraft says it saw demand for Philadelphia-style cream cheese spike at least 18% last year as more people baked at home. Kraft hopes to make enough cream cheese for everyone who wants it as we go into next year. How funny. I hadn't thought about it until we ran the story, and now I feel like going out and buying. And I was going to say, now we're craving cheesecake. Everybody in the room craving cheese, cheesecake? Yep, uh, everybody. Oh, yeah. Cheese, yep. Oh, yeah. Cheesecake for breakfast. Why not? 548, let's check on the morning commute. Have you all ever had a chestnut praline cheesecake? No, but that sounds oh, awesome. It's delicious. It's perfect during this time of year. Yeah. When are you going to make one? Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. Well, you you got to bring the uh, Mark's got to bring the potato soup, right? So <laughs> right. desserts. Chestnut pecan. I'm bringing napkins. That's not praline. Chestnut praline. That's not so praline. This w <laughs> sounds like we're working on a GMSA potluck breakfast at yeah. some point. Okay. 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 All right, but wait, they were asking us not to do the cheesecake, so maybe I'll do something else. But oh, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, let's get a quick look at the roadways. I'll change the subject here to get myself out of the hot seat. 1604 at Babcock. Traffic is moving pretty light through that area. The morning's not been too bad. However, there's been some scattered issues throughout the roadways that you're going to want to be on the lookout for. The big one I would say at this hour would be this big rig that's detected off of US 90 eastbound at Zazamoto. Thankfully, it's not impacting traffic as of yet, but keep in mind we're inching closer to 6 a.m. and we all know what that means. More folks would get out on the roadways. Let's take a jump up here because we still have that stall that's been out there at I-10 westbound at Fresno Drive. It's not causing problems, but again, something to be on the lookout for. Uh, some construction that we also want to talk about. Road work that is off of 30 uh, this has led to the single northbound lane closure on the frontage road from FM 2252 to FM 1103. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. and it should usually wrap around 530 in the afternoon. Keep in mind that is current, but as we inch closer to that weekend, we should see it wrapping up on December 18th. So some good news there for our drivers that may be traveling up north. But right now the roadways have been pretty calm so far. And again, great way to start the morning. Maybe grab a cup of coffee on your way to work, guys.
Our okay. director, Robert, just got in my area. He said, is it pralines or pralines? Praline. 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 Chestnut praline. Praline. Mm -hmm. praline? Delicious. How long does that take to make? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I usually order it. I usually order it. But I thought you made it. <coughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> I don't do that. I'm with you, Steve. <laughs> Too much do you have pressure. a computer over there to order? I'll tell you what. I'll look up the recipe, and I'll get back to you. Mm. And then maybe you can make it. Father oh, Christmas. <laughs> Pass the praline, why don't you? Pass Gotta the pass the bucks. Um, look at the size of that. What is that? Is that a vulture? A buzzer? Uh, it kind of looks like just it. Said, Yvonne yeah. said uh, two oh, buzzers. Oh, yeah, two buzzers. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Wow. Yeah, there's a caption right in front of you. If it's a snake, it would have bitten you, Mike. Oh. I was looking at the picture. I wasn't reading. So. Wait a minute. Where's the other one? Where's the other where's one? The yeah. other one? <laughs> I see one, Yvonne. Uh -huh. I don't see two. Mm hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Hope Yvonne's okay since we didn't see the other <laughs> buzzer. Anyway, thank you for the KSAT Connect picture. All right, lots of clouds hanging out this morning. Um, same as it's been, seems like every other morning so far this week. Temperature stands at 71 degrees, 30 degrees roughly above normal. Upper 60s, parts of the hill country. A ton of humidity out there, of course. And that's going to remain the case through about this time Saturday morning. So for the next 48 hours, it's going to stay very warm, very humid, but it's going to be this time Saturday morning. We're going to be watching the front work its way on through the uh, the hill country. Wind out of the south at uh, about 5, 10 miles per hour. So not overly breezy, maybe enough of a breeze to prevent a whole lot of fog from forming, but just kind of be on the lookout, especially out in portions of the hill country. So once that front moves on through here, yeah, dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere, are going to be dropping like a rock. Although, you know, this a lot of times you think of a front and it just kind of clears everything on out. It's not going to be the situation. The last few fronts that we've had and it, also this one, it's a very shallow layer of cold air down here at the surface. So we're still going to have a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. The flow coming in here from the southwest will still remain. So that will help keep the clouds around. Then we get those disturbances coming on through here. And that's what's going to touch off the uh, showers over the weekend. A couple little sprinkly showers today, tomorrow. Then we get into Saturday. That's when the better rain chances move on in here, even a few thunderstorms. And this is going to be primarily the first portion of the day Saturday. Slight break in the action in through the first part of the day Sunday. Then another disturbance is going to be sliding across. This one's a little slower with that. I think it's out by, say, mid morning on Monday, but we'll still have more rain then later on, kind of bookending the weekend and then overnight into uh, Monday as well. So the forecast goes like this. We are going to have temperatures that, well, we only gain about 10 throughout the day, but given the fact we're 30 degrees above normal right now, 76 at noon, cloudy, a couple of sprinkles out there, and then a high temperature today day 80. The record is 81. Real close call, a sprinkler two and a couple of peaks of sunshine. Same thing tomorrow. Front comes through again about this time Saturday morning. Temperatures will be dropping down 50, even upper 40s by late in the day. Windy, wet showers, thunderstorms, especially first part of the day Saturday, then the latter part of the day Sunday into early, early Monday. Now, Steph, you were out yesterday. I got excited about that giant snowflake on Tuesday, but it turns out it's just a uh... Just, just an icon. Just for just winter. Yeah. No, not with 67 degrees for the start <laughs> of winter. So. Well, we could hope. I mean, I just figured as it passed through the atmosphere past this, it would melt at some point. High enough up in the atmosphere, possibly, but... Uh, Maybe yeah. later, Mark. I'm really overthinking a mistake here. <laughs> just a simple little graphic. <laughs> yes, sir. 554, about 70 degrees. Thinking about Let's look at your cheesecake. <laughs> winning lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 293, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 8068, Fireball 1. Cash five numbers 278 10 32 Lotto Texas 10 32 33 41 45 53 and Powerball 19 20 40 42 59 Powerball 15 power play three. San Antonio is bringing back a holiday scavenger hunt. It combines the game of Loteria with Christmas decor and prizes. The goal is to find the cards hidden Christmas trees around downtown. It's free and runs through the end of the month. You can get a clue on where to begin your search by visiting TravisParkSA.com. Glad you're with us on this Thursday morning. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, police are trying to piece together a deadly overnight shooting on the east side. We'll have more information. Plus, more of the dangers of dating and ways to get you out of scary situations. Trans guide right now. Let's see how things are looking out there. More traffic coming right at you at that last shot. It was really quick. I couldn't tell you where it was. 281 at Hildebrand, and we still have that stalled tanker truck out there. 90 at Nogalitos. We'll be back.
They put in a lot of miles and a lot of time, but police say none of it worked for four men who were on the run. They are in jail now. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. President Biden has touched down in Mayfield. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Kentucky. Coming up, his message to survivors of the storm. Bear County Sheriff's deputies discover a massive gambling operation on the city's south side. Dozens of people were arrested. We'll have details. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 70 degrees. And if you like the warm temperatures, it's going to stay warm throughout the day. But this weekend, things are looking different. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good Thursday morning. It is December 16th. Thanks for joining us. And usually I like to let Mike make my weekend plans with, with the weather. And he had suggested maybe like staying indoors because uh, it's going to be nice and cold. But I just realized my daughter has a basketball game. Well, Ooh. you'll still be indoors. Well, that's true. That's yeah. true. Because I had mentioned about staying in jammies all day long. You going to wear your jammies to the basketball game? <laughs> I don't know if I can get away with that. People but. wear them on airplanes. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> am, I not, am I correct? Uh, yeah, that's, if you don't have to head out on Saturday, it will be one of those great days just to kind of hunker down inside, put on a big, big pot of some warm, good soup and a grilled cheese sandwich. We've got lots of clouds out there. Last thing you want is something warm right now because uh, temperatures are 30 degrees above normal. We're at 71, same thing. Stinson 67, Kelly Randolph 69. Normal low temperatures 42 degrees. We'll finally be back down there by Sunday morning. Mountain Cedar yesterday really shot up almost 4700. One of the highest readings we've had so far this season that despite the fact we didn't have any big fronts move on through here. So with that in mind, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the Mountain Cedar count uh, by Saturday with those very blustery northerly winds 70. Pretty much steady temperatures all morning long. Lots of clouds. Watch out for a, a hint of fog out toward the hill country this morning. Also, if there is some mist or even a sprinkle later on today, uh, we're going to make it up into the mid 70s today at noon and then top off at 80. The record today is 81. It's going to be a real close call. Same thing tomorrow. Then that cold front's going to be moving through about this time Saturday morning. Big, big changes and rain chances pretty much all weekend long breaks here and there, but it's going to be a good looking weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavasso has been pretty quiet on the road so far. Well, you know, we don't have any major issues out there, I would say, Mike. Right now, the roads have been quiet, but traffic picking up, as you can see, from 37 at Salado Creek. We got some people moving this morning. They're 1604 at Babcock. Thankfully, as I mentioned, the issues that we've been seeing have been minor, but nonetheless, things to be out on the lookout for. The trending issue seems to be stalls today, so let's go ahead and take you right to the map because we have a new one that popped up right here along the loop 410 westbound at Somerset Road. Uh, thankfully, very early still 6 a.m. a little bit after we're not seeing an impact with traffic just yet. But again, that's a problem that's continuing up here. You can see off US 90 eastbound at Zazamora. We had that big rig that's been stranded th out there throughout the morning. Uh, I was just checking the trans guide cameras. It does look like that driver is receiving assistance from a hero truck. Keep in mind, this is at the exit ramp there. And as we take a jump up over here, another stall still detected off I 10 westbound at Fresno Drive in a big jump jump up over here to the north side where we do have a I, the stall of I 35 northbound at Schwab Road. So as I mentioned, that is the trend of the morning. Those stalled vehicles, but a wider look at the map does show it's still quiet, thankfully. And as we get more people out on the roads, that's a good thing. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. They may get an A for effort before suspects ultimately have to take an L when it comes to trying to run from police. They lost. Officers caught them and arrested them this morning in a west side neighborhood. Katrina Weber is live where it ended on Loma Park Street, not far from St. Mary's University. And Katrina, as you mentioned, though, this started with a chase across town. Well, that's right. So we understand that this started in Kirby. Now, police there tell us that these men were involved in a rolling gun battle with people in another car. And when officers rolled up, they all took off. The San Antonio police say they later found the people from one car hiding behind and under a home in the 200 block of Loma Park. Their helicopter had followed them there. Getting the suspects to come out, though, wasn't easy. They ignored warning shots that were fired by a neighbor here and tried to dodge a drone that police deployed. A police dog eventually got one suspect out. Then officers got the others to give up around one this morning. And again, these men originally were wanted in connection with the chase and shooting that started in Kirby around 9 o'clock last night. 
Now, it appears that the people in the other car that were involved in that did get away. The people in custody now face charges, likely including invading arrest. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The Bear County Sheriff's Office saying several gambling machines were pulled from a San Antonio home last night. Investigators think they were used in an illegal gambling operation. Case centers around a home on Tremlett and South Presa down on the south side. Investigators showed us where several gaming machines were lined up against the walls. BCSO says drugs were also found inside the home and that prostitution may have been taking place there too. We were told that neighbors were complaining for months before investigators were able to establish a case. Four people were arrested in that investigation. There's a number to call if you would like to report a similar situation in your neighborhood. That number is 210-335-GANG. And South San Antonio ISD welcoming a new interim superintendent to the district. Henry Izaguera is set to lead the district while the district launches an inquiry into current superintendent Mark Puig. That inquiry launched after private conversation on a hot mic surrounding decisions on hiring. Now, Izaguera is a district graduate and was working for Southside ISD. He says his focus is on raising the academic performance of students. It is not clear how long the inquiry involving Puig will take. Some new information about the deadly tornadoes that ripped through parts of the Midwest. The National Weather Service now confirming the tornado, one of the biggest, was a high-end EF4 twister. This as President Biden touches down in Kentucky to survey the damage left from the storms. ABC's Ike Jaji is in Mayfield with the latest. Good morning. President Biden is pledging the full support of the federal government to assist those on the ground in whatever way possible. New information regarding the stream of tornadoes that devastated parts of the Midwest. The National Weather Service confirming that an EF4 tornado tore through parts of western Kentucky 128 miles long, the second most intense designation a tornado can receive. Drone footage over Mayfield highlighting the twister's perilous path. President Biden on a walking tour in Kentucky, meeting with families and sharing a solemn prayer with local faith leaders. The president acknowledging the pain on the ground. There's no words for the pain of losing someone. A lot of us know it. So far, 600 National Guard members have been deployed in over 18 hard-hit counties. FEMA providing 61 generators, over 38,000 gallons of water, 24,000 meals, and tens of thousands of cots and blankets. Biden also announcing the federal government will cover 100% of the cost of all emergency work for the next 30 days. No one's walking away. We're in this for the long haul. And overnight, the National Weather Service is confirming a tornado has touched down in Minnesota, the first ever December tornado in the region. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. 608 data is still coming in on the vaccines versus the Omicron variant for the two-dose Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. A study from South Africa suggests it's 33 percent effective at preventing Omicron. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says a booster offers up to 75 percent protection against symptomatic infection. And that same South African study on Pfizer also showed vaccinated adults were less likely to be hospitalized. With Moderna, other data suggests a two-dose vaccine's ability to neutralize Omicron was between 49 and 80 four times lower than when it faced an earlier variant. But a booster may, excuse me, a booster dose may substantially reduce the risk. We're going to have more on the Omicron variant and the booster shots in the next half hour of GMSA. Apple is responding to the new COVID surge. The company now saying corporate employees will return to the office on a date yet to be determined. Workers were supposed to go back February 1st. Apple's also giving every employee $1,000 for work at home expenses. A Los Angeles federal grand jury has charged a Texas oil company and two subsidiaries for an oil spill off of the California coast in October. Federal prosecutors say Houston-based Amplify Energy Corporation and its two subsidiaries that operate oil rigs and a pipeline off Long Beach were charged with a misdemeanor for illegally discharging oil. A ruptured pipeline that is believed to have been caused when a cargo ship snagged it with an anchor spilled about 25,000 gallons of crude oil. U.S. prosecutors say the companies were negligent several ways, including failing to respond to eight leak detection system alarms that should have alerted them to the spill and would have minimized that damage. Big news in the NFL this morning. The Urban Meyer era has come to an end in Jacksonville. The Jaguars have fired the head coach after 13 games. Comes with an accumulation of missteps. Owner Shad Khan made the move 
hours after ex-Jaguars player Josh Lambeau told a Florida newspaper that Meyer kicked him during practice back in August. It was the latest embarrassment for the three-time national championship winning college coach who failed miserably to make the transition to the NFL. Got to be honest, rough night for the Silver and Black. Spurs home last night trying to keep their win streak going against the Hornets. San Antonio had six players in double figures, but it wasn't enough to hang with Charlotte. Hornets never trailed. Spurs dropped this one 131-115. to 115. It's the end of a five-game homestand in which the Spurs finished 3-2. and two. Next up, San Antonio has a road matchup with Utah Jazz. That game is set for 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And time now, 6-10 and about 70 degrees out there. Still ahead, Odd GMSA major car manufacturer has a new feature in development. It hopes it will make our roads safer. We're going to have all those details. Are you taking a trip anytime soon? Just ahead, we'll tell you why some flights could continue to be delayed, and the answer may surprise you. And taking a look outside with a live cam, 70 degrees, not too bad there. If you are not a fan of cold weather, you don't need a jacket today. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 614. If you're planning on traveling anytime soon, the major airlines are warning about more delays in the future. But it's not because of what you think, weather or scheduling problems. It's because of what they say are problems related to wireless carriers rolling out 5G service nationwide. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. Airline CEOs were on Capitol Hill Wednesday with a dire warning for travelers already fed up with delays and disruptions. They say a plan by Verizon and AT&T to offer 5G wireless service beginning next month could disrupt thousands of daily flights. The safety concerns uh, with aircraft and aviation are very real. They say 5G could interfere with sensitive electronics that help pilots land in bad weather at dozens of airports. The FAA is uncomfortable with the safety risks. To get around the problem, they say more flights will have to be diverted to other airports, which they say could cost passengers more than $1 billion in annual delays. The wireless industry accuses the airlines of fear-mongering, saying 5G is already operating in dozens of other countries without issue. They have no answers for you. They to tell you that uh, nothing that we can do. Meanwhile, Senators Wednesday demanded CEOs answer for the hundreds of cancellations and delays that plagued airports this fall. We end up with airplanes in the wrong place, people in the wrong place. So that was the, that was the driver of the vast majority of the cancellations. Taxpayers spent $54 billion bailing out the airline industry during the pandemic, but the CEOs say even with all that money, they were forced to shrink their staffs. And at least one senator demanded the airlines refund customers for flights canceled due to the pandemic or offer credits that don't expire. At a minimum, they just want a voucher that they can use whenever they want to. Uh, they shouldn't have to worry that in order to get the cash that they have uh, being used, that they have to jump on a flight in the next three months when the pandemic is now rising. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Honda is testing a new system that could help in repairing the nation's crumbly infrastructure. It's designed to detect faded lane markers and other road damage using a car's existing cameras and navigation system. The data will be uploaded to alert transportation departments about potential hazards. Uh, Stephen Cavazos is here with an update to alert you on any major or minor accidents out there. Well, I would say, uh, thankfully, the morning's quiet, but we have seen a lot of stalls out there. Thankfully, this one here of US 90 and Ogolitos, we've been talking about it throughout the morning. This big rig that's been experiencing some trouble there on the exit ramp, finally receiving some assistance from one of those TxDOT hero trucks, it looks like. So some good news, and we could see some resolution there momentarily, but uh, these vehicles that are driving through there at that exit ramp drive carefully, of course, give them plenty of room. Uh, taking you right to the Apple. We're seeing some resolution here. Uh, other new stalls are popping up that we're keeping a watchful eye on here off Loop 410 westbound at Somerset Road. Uh, again, we have that one off US 90 eastbound at Zazamoto. Could be clearing soon, so some good news. Uh, but we still have that one there off I-10 westbound at Fresno Drive. It's just been a morning of stalls. So again, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. And if you encounter a stalled vehicle on the highway, make sure again to move over or slow down. Quick reminder, we mentioned this a little bit earlier that there was some road work that should be wrapping up today off 1604 eastbound. And this is along the frontage road lanes there, and it's from Chase Hill Boulevard to John Peace Boulevard. Starts at 9 in the morning and will finish around 5 in the afternoon. Again, that wraps today, so an early Christmas gift for our drivers out there this morning. But wider look at the map. Thankfully, with the lanes are wide open, so just make sure you take
take it easy out on the roadways, guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. GMSA viewer Julie Cheatwood just wrote me on Facebook, Mike, and said, good morning, team. Are you all on Santa's naughty or nice list? Nice. Nice, for sure. I swear both. I mean, I don't know. It depends. Both. You have to ask my parents. <laughs> yeah, it, it's all That's up to my parents. I, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys whether yeah. I'm on the naughty or nice mm. list. I know what Steph's gonna say. We have, a few, we have a few more days you know, to give you the answer. On the waiting list, Mark and I can be on the waiting list. There to get you go. The That's nice it. I am. That. I'm waitlisted, Mike. <laughs> We're waitlisted. Yeah. We'll get Steph and I, we get to the front. Of the line, so. <laughs> okay. Should I trade places with you over there, Mark? So, you know, anyway. Uh, <laughs> we could try it. <laughs> yeah. We have got very warm, now get, 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 go away. So uh, we got very warm, humid conditions this morning. Temperatures are about 30 degrees above normal. We are right around 70, upper 60s in parts of the hill country, and then 80 for a high temperature later on today. Again, the record high is 81. Going to be close to it. Same thing tomorrow, but the countdown roughly 48 hours from now is when that front's going to be working its way on through the area. A couple little sprinkly showers going to be possible today as well. Uh, Botanical Gardens, the lightscape out there is really pretty. Look at those gorgeous, gorgeous. You, I mean, you take a, a walk through some of the, the pathways there and everything and some of the uh, lights around the lake there. It's really, really pretty set up, so uh, highly recommend it. All right, got a lot of clouds hanging around here, and we're not seeing, I mean, there may be a little bit of mist. It almost looks like there is some kind of a sheen on the, uh, the road there on the access road over there by 410 by the airport. We obviously have a lot of moisture down here at the surface with the very high humidity, and then we've got all of this moisture, the water vapor imagery showing the moisture aloft in the atmosphere coming in here from the southwest. That is not going to be changing. This is part of what's going to add to or help out with what we call the overrunning situation. We'll have the front moving down through here at the surface, but then upstairs in the atmosphere, we're going to keep that flow coming in here out of the southwest, keeping all the, the moisture around, and that's what's going to be helping with the, obviously, uh, the rain ch chances that we have coming in here this weekend. 81 yesterday, 86 Pleasanton, and even some upper 80s down to the south. Same situation again today. Like I said, the uh, high temperature, the record high temperature is 81 degrees, so it's going to be really, really close to that. Satellite picture, radar, maybe a couple of sprinkles off to the east. You know, you can't rule out a stray little sprinkly shower or two, even later on today. There's that huge storm system produced that tornado in, uh, many, in Minnesota, which is the first time ever in the month of December they had a, a tornado up there. High pressure is kind of in control of us. We are going to continue with the southwesterly airflow aloft in the atmosphere. The front comes down through here at the surface, but that low is going to continue to pump the moisture in on top of the cooler air. So it's going to be just one of those kind of raw sort of days on Saturday. Windy, wet, much, much cooler temperatures, 50, upper 40s. And then as that low works its way across here late Sunday into Monday, that's going to then give us another chance for some rain. So it'll be pretty much the first First half of the day on Saturday with rain, and then it picks back up in the latter half of the day on Sunday. 76 degrees today at noon, cloudy. You know, a couple of sprinkles are possible out there, and same thing later on this afternoon. Even a couple of peaks of sunshine like we saw the past few days. 80, high temperature, again, record's 81. Tomorrow the record is 82. And then we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures drop down in the morning. Front moves through about this time Saturday morning. Good day to hunker down inside. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, if you're looking for a fun holiday-themed activity, you're just in luck. We're going to have those details after the break. What can I do with less <laughs> asthma? With Depixent, I can do more. Yeah. Oh, yard work. Teamwork. Long walks. Hi, Tim. Game on! That's how you do more with Depixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixin's not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here are some of the important. Depixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection, and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Hey, Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixin. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, airline CEOs in the hot seat and admitting they made big mistakes that led to hundreds of cancellations and delays this fall. In this environment, even though we are adequately staffed, it, it gets it misproperly characterized as we don't have enough people. At issue, the $54 billion used to bail out the airline industry during the pandemic. The airlines say even with that money, they were forced to shrink their staff. We just need to make sure that we don't overschedule the airline relative to the people resources that we have, and we've made um, uh, a number of adjustments uh, in that regard. LAX packed with passengers Wednesday as holiday travel ramps up. I'm expecting the unexpected, uh, obviously preparing for the, the worst, but expecting the best. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what that testimony revealed about the holiday travel season. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. San Antonio is bringing back a holiday scavenger hunt that allows people to stay six feet apart and combines the game of Loteria with Christmas decor and prizes. This year, the cards will have a SeaWorld theme. The goal is to find the cards hidden in Christmas trees around downtown. The scavenger hunt is free and runs through the end of the month. Those with the highest scores will have a chance to win a prize pack that includes tickets to SeaWorld. You can get a clue on where to begin your search by visiting TravisParkSA.com. 626, about 70 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA tragedy in Australia. Several children dead after falling from a bounce house that had been lifted into the air. We'll have more details. And Stephen's keeping an eye on the roads for you. This tanker truck's been there pretty much all morning long so far during GMSA. 90 at the ramp to Nogalitos. We'll get an update from him coming up. Outside with live cam, traffic is building. We'll talk to Stephen in a moment. And Mike's forecast includes a pretty significant cool down as we go into the weekend. But right now, unseasonably warm with a capital U. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for joining us. It is Thursday, December 16th. And a little warm, you know, this entire week, really. I was telling Mark earlier that uh, we did, or I took my little girl to do the uh, Downtown Run Group's annual Jingle Bell Run, which was on Tuesday evening. And it was really pretty because you go through UIW with all the lights and oh, everything like that. Great. But it was so humid. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're just... <laughs> <laughs> dripping in sweat. Yeah, you know, Sunday we got down to what 34 degrees here in town yeah. and we are almost double that, you know, this morning and the past couple of mornings going to be the same thing tomorrow. And then we're looking at near record high temperatures today and Good news is in 48 hours, we will be watching the front move on through the area and we'll bring some rain for us and finally going to feel like December and Christmas again by the weekend. So lots of clouds out there right now. There could be a little bit of mist. Um, it looks like there you know, has been a couple of uh, kind of look like a little sheen on the road in places out there. 71 degrees, 67 is the dew point. Plenty of humidity out there. Wind out of the southeast about 5, 10 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze has helped to really prevent a lot of widespread fog, but we're seeing hints of it around Castroville, Stinson, and then further out to the west toward Eagle Pass and Victoria obviously has a lot of fog. So just kind of be on the lookout. The winds died down. You may see some fog trying to form up in the next couple of hours. Mountain Cedar really went up yesterday and it, like I've been saying all morning long, it's going to be interesting to see what that does. Mountain Cedar count once that big front moves on through here early Saturday and mold is on the light side. So warm, humid, Maybe a little mist out there. Today is going to look a lot like yesterday. Plenty of clouds uh, break here or there. A little bit of sunshine. Also, can't uh, can't rule out a sprinkler too. And of course, those near record high temperatures. Same thing tomorrow. Then we'll start to see some rain move into the hill country late, late tomorrow night, early Saturday morning. Front moves through again about this time Saturday morning and temperatures will drop down. We'll only be about 50 or even upper 40s throughout the day. Windy conditions and rain will be pretty much the first half of the day, say to about mid afternoon Saturday, we see sort of a lull and then it's going to pick back up again on Sunday with another disturbance moving through here into early Monday temperatures. Yeah, it's going to stay pretty chilly all weekend long. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, a couple of minor glitches here and there. Yeah, I would say so, Mike, you know, but taking a look at trans guy, the roads are looking pretty good so far uh, as now that we are uh, getting closer to morning rush. Uh, we still have the situation off US 90 at Nogalitos. I you can see there the driver receiving some assistance uh, was 410 at Somerset. We did have a stalled vehicle out there as well. Thankfully, that looks like it has resolved. Now, a lot of these shots do show a pretty easy commute. Uh, doesn't mean the problems aren't out there. As I mentioned, we have the situation happening off US 90. Let's take a closer look.
look at the map, see how that's shaping up right now with traffic, maybe moving into the east uh, bound lanes there to maybe San Antonio. Uh, thankfully, it's not impacting it mu that much. As you saw from that trans guide shot, it looks like that particular big rig is on the exit ramp there. Uh, Texas has that listed in those eastbound lanes right at Zazamona. So this is as you're coming in from perhaps Castroville. So something to watch out for there. Uh, taking a wider look at the map, it has been a pretty quiet morning, and I think that's something that we like to say, especially at this hour when more people are getting out on the roadway. So some good news. Coffee lines may be long, but the roadways are going to be looking pretty good at this hour. Uh, and so are these inbound times. If you're traveling into San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, perhaps from Pleasanton on 37, 28 minutes, 17 minutes from 35 in Lytle, and coming in from 90, you have 19 minutes. Just watch out for this big rig there. If you are going to be traveling through there, 281 at Nakoma, things are picking up. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a shooting on the east side leaves one woman dead. It happened around 1 this morning on Hay Street near New Braunfels Avenue. Details are still limited, but police say several people were hanging out in the street after leaving a bar when the woman in her 30s was shot. She died at the scene. Investigators are still looking for suspects. We're learning more about possible symptoms of the Omicron variant as hospitals brace for a wave of new COVID infections. Meanwhile, from colleges closing classrooms to pro athletes getting sidelined, companies to de companies delaying the return to the office. It seems when it comes to the pandemic, our future is looking a lot like our past. ABC's Andrea Fajii has more. This morning, America is bracing for a dramatic surge in coronavirus infections as the new Omicron variant shows that it can be slowed but not stopped by the current vaccines. Well, the message remains clear. If you are unvaccinated, get vaccinated. Apple is now indefinitely delaying its return to the office. George Washington University is now joining Princeton, Cornell, and NYU, canceling all events and moving exams online. More than 100 professional athletes have now tested positive or were exposed to the virus this week. The NFL Players Association is now pushing for daily testing. And in Canada, Ontario will now limit venues to 50% capacity. Every healthcare system is planning and bracing for the coming winter months that are likely going to be pretty bad. Omicron cases are doubling every two days in the U.S. New data shows the variant significantly reduces antibody protection after two doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. But doctors say the booster shot mostly restores peak protection. If we didn't have these tools, I would be telling you to really, really be worried. <laughs> but we have tools. So get vaccinated, get boosted. Research has shown Omicron causes less severe disease, and now a preliminary study from South Africa reveals it may cause different symptoms compared to previous variants, including a scratchy throat as opposed to a sore throat. The most common symptoms currently are cough, fatigue, congestion, runny nose, and with that runny nose comes the scratchy throat. But if you have a sore throat if you, or if you feel unwell for any reason, you should get tested for COVID. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Navy will soon start discharging sailors who don't get vaccinated against COVID. Sailors who previously refused but have since changed their minds will be able to remain in uniform. According to last week's information, the Navy had just over 5,700 sailors who have not been vaccinated. Roughly half are asking for an exemption due to religious beliefs. The Navy says no one will be discharged while those requests are pending. President Joe Biden is pledging to help those affected by last weekend's tornadoes in whatever way possible after seeing the damage firsthand yesterday afternoon. The National Weather Service says the twister was a high-end EF4 tornado. Search and rescue teams are still combing through debris looking for survivors. Over 100 people are still missing and 88 are confirmed dead. Thousands are expected to be without power for weeks. Here at home, our own neighbors are helping in the recovery efforts in the Midwest. A phone bank held in the KSAT studios yesterday, taking donations for the Red Cross. Currently have $7,185 raised, with more still being counted. All the money goes directly to the tornado relief efforts. You still have a chance to help. There are two ways to donate. You can visit redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Five children are dead and four are hurt after they fell from a bouncy castle in Australia. It happened at a primary school in Tasmania. Police say wind lifted the inflatable house 32 feet in the air. The school says the bouncy castle was supposed to be part of a celebration for the end of the school year. Just unthinkably heartbreaking and young children on a, 
a fun day out together with their families and it turns to such horrific tragedy. Two girls and two boys are among the dead. The gender of the fifth child is not known and we're told given their grade levels, they are probably between the ages of 10 and 12. Harvey Weinstein is trying to get his sex abuse conviction overturned. The movie mogul serving a 23 year prison sentence after being convicted in New York of first degree criminal sexual act and third degree rape charges. But now Weinstein's lawyer has asked a panel of appeals court judges to reverse the conviction because of issues with a juror and judge who oversaw the case. The appeal said one juror lied about to the court about a book she was writing that involved predatory men also accused the judge of admitting an overwhelming amount of what was referred to as bad evidence to jurors. The panel of judges is expected to make a written decision on whether or not to vacate his conviction sometime in the future. Well, if you're looking for a job, be a little extra careful. That's because right now employment scams are the number one scheme reported in San Antonio to the Better Business Bureau. Now, the Better Business Bureau reporting that scammers are doing their homework and getting more creative, victimizing families who are looking to make ends meet. Although you may be searching for a job on a legitimate website, experts say to look for a requisition number or a job ID on the actual posting to vet the company and the recruiter. Recruiter, also be leery if you're automatically hired for a position and stay away from jobs that require gift cards or information about your personal bank account. The work always sounds too good to be true. In other words, um, it's easy for you to go to any retailer, any store, load up gift cards and transfer the money, and then it's gone. It's just like cash in the wind. Zero to 2% of the time do we see people get any money back or any relief from giving money via gift cards. Um, it's just highly untraceable. Users can track scams and should report that if they come across any. The Better Business Bureau, and also you can report it to the Federal Trade Commission. We have those links listed on our website at kset.com. Farmers warning that food may get even more expensive. Fertilizer prices have more than doubled in the last year thanks to worldwide shortages of key chemicals. Some farmers say they're being forced to shift away from corn and wheat and plant crops like soybeans that don't need as much fertilizer. Probably seen stray cats or dogs roaming around your home before, but one Houston area man security cameras captured this. Dozens of wild pigs rooting through his yards along his street. When he took a closer look, the homeowner says he counted between 25 and 30 pigs. You can watch that surveillance video right now on over at ksat.com. That's crazy looking. It's quite a few. 640, about 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about the dangers of dating and what you can do to get yourself out of a scary situation. Welcome back at 644. One in four women will experience domestic or dating violence in their lifetime. And women between the ages of 20 to 24 are the greatest risk of becoming victims. So it's important for young women to know how to get out of a bad situation. RJ Marcus has that story. Whether you swipe right or do it the old-fashioned way, dating is exciting. I like the Facebook dating app. There's a Facebook dating app? Yeah! Ah. We ended up meeting at work. But dating these days can also be dangerous. Here's some safety steps you can take. First, set up your emergency contacts on your iPhone. Located in your health app, tap the medical ID and scroll to emergency contact. Tap to add their information and relationship to you. Next, whenever you quickly click your lock button five times in a row, your iPhone will call the local authorities as well as alert the emergency contact of your location. Going on a first date with someone you don't know? You can share your location with someone you trust and make sure you regularly check in via text during the date. And if you're on a date and feeling threatened, ordering an angel shot could save you. It works by going up to the bar and asking for an angel shot neat and the bartender will escort you to your car. Ask for it with ice and the bartender will call an Uber for you. Order it with Lime and the staff will call police. Authorities also say families should set up a code word that can be texted to signal danger or if they feel they're in an uncomfortable situation. Keep this code word private among your immediate family and tell everyone to only use it in emergencies. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Now spread the word. In time now, 645, it's time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. I would say at Morning Rush, this is a good way to start it, guys. Right now, unfortunately here, the shot that just popped up from Transca is not looking too good. US 90 no Galitas, we had that stalled big rig that's been out there throughout the entire morning. Uh, but other spots, we are seeing traffic moving pretty easy, although it is picking up because obviously more people are getting out on the roadways. But as I mentioned, this issue right here off US 90 no Galitas, been there for quite a while. It stalled uh, a big rig, as you saw, off US 90 eastbound, detected at Zazamoto, so 
coming into San Antonio, be on the lookout for that. If you're coming in perhaps from Castroville, uh, these things tend to take time to resolve. So hopefully uh, that will be resolved at some point before more people get out on the roadways. Um, and a quick reminder here, we have some road work that will be going on today. Uh, from It's led to a single northbound lane closure on the frontage road from FM 2252 to FM 1103. That starts at 9 in the morning. Should be wrapping up by 530 in the afternoon and should be wrapping up altogether by December 18th. But we are seeing a slowdown there in those southbound lanes of 35. So those congestion spots are starting to pick up, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Here's something just to make you smile. Take a Aww. look at your TV set right now. Aww. Look at this little pup. Our six month old grandson definitely has the Christmas spirit and go team Santa. Just a great, great picture. Thank you so very much for that. Love that one. All right, lots of clouds out there this morning. We're not seeing any beautiful sunrises, unfortunately, and uh, got a lot of clouds all day long, maybe even a couple of sprinkles. There are also a few holes in the clouds here and there, like we've seen the past couple of days. And uh, as far as any rain today, it'll just be nuisance as at best and that's going to be the same situation tomorrow. Now later on tomorrow night we are going to start to see and this is going to be late tomorrow night early Saturday morning as the front moves through. So it's going to be about this time Saturday morning when the front starts to work its way through obviously sooner in the hill country and it's going to touch off showers and a few uh, thunderstorms around here. Those are going to continue on maybe uh, especially off to the north and east inch inch and a half of rain is going to be possible and then by about mid late afternoon noon. The rain's going to start to sort of taper off just a little bit and it's going to pick back up though on Sunday. Now, as far as the uh, dew point temperatures, humidity is going to be dropping off as will temperatures throughout the day on Saturday. So we're going to be starting off you know, it's going to go down in the books as a uh, high temperature about 70 on Saturday, but that's going to be in the wee hours by the afternoon. It's only going to be 50 or even just uh, mid to upper 40s around here. Plenty of low clouds hanging around and we have this uh, kind of overrunning situation. You can see all that moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean and also that low out there digging down off the West Coast. That's going to help with our rain chances as we go on into the weekend, because even though We'll have a front move through down here at the surface. We still have those upper winds coming in here, not straight down out of Canada. And that low is going to continue to pump in moisture. It's going to throw energy in here, combining with the front moving on through. Then it's going to work its way across the area into late Sunday, early Monday. And that's going to help out with the rain chances then later Sunday into the early part of the day, Monday. So forecast today, 76 at noon, cloudy. A couple of sprinkles are going to be possible today. And then a high temperature up to 80. Again, a sprinkle or two and even a few uh, peaks of sunshine here or there. Same thing tomorrow. The record today, by the way, is 81 degrees. Record high is 82 tomorrow. Real close on both counts. And then it's going to be just kind of a raw sort of a day. Hunker down, put a fire in the fireplace. Big the bowl pajamas. of soup, some oatmeal. <laughs> all of that. Movies. All of that. Yeah, all of that. All it's a that. real December day. Yep. Going all great this weekend. All you're missing is some mistletoe. That too. <laughs> right now, 649, about 70 degrees. Tuba Meister Christmas is back after missing last year because of the pandemic. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. We're going to give you a preview of this year's show, how you can participate and enjoy it. And before it feels like Christmas, we'll have to get through today and tomorrow. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 70 degrees right now. This Essay Salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Walk On Sports Bistro. Hi, I'm Christina from Walk Ons, and I want to say thank you to all of our active duty men and women and our veterans, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the coronavirus with the fast spreading Omicron variant fears that it could lead to an even bigger surge in cases than we're seeing right now. We're going to tell you what you should do before you take one of those at home rapid tests to improve your chances of an accurate reading. Also, Dr. Fauci is going to join us to discuss all of this right here on GMA. They ran, they hid, but they got caught. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Four men in custody after what police say started as a chase in Kirby, but ended clear across town. The San Antonio police caught up with those men around one this morning. They say they were hiding under and behind a home in the 200 block of Loma Park. The Kirby police originally tried to catch them. They say those men were involved in a gun battle with people in another car in that city. 
San Antonio's helicopter got involved, followed them to the west side, and then police tried to take them into custody, but they weren't willing to go at first. Police had to send in a dog, fly a drone, and a neighbor even fired warning shots before those men gave up. Now, this originally started around 9 o'clock last night, but those men weren't taken into custody until 1 this morning. And it appears the people who were involved in that original gun battle with them in the other car got away. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks to the Salvation Army, thousands of local kids will have a Christmas gift this year. The organization's Angel Tree program has been around since 1979. And coming up this morning on GMSA at 9, how the local Salvation Army is continuing that legacy with a gift dist distribution event. Tiffany Wethos will join us live for a look at where these gifts came from and how it was all made possible. Let's go straight to Stephen and traffic. Thank you, Mark Stephanie. Well, it's been a nice morning on the roadways as we take one last look at TransGuide 281 and Acoma. These shots show the traffic's moving through there pretty easy, but despite the nice shots here, we have an issue up off 35 uh, past New Braunfels. Here off those southbound lanes, uh, Watson Lane, we do have a crash has been detected. Not seen any big issues just yet, but we're going to watch it very closely and still at Saul Big Rig out here of US 90 eastbound at Zaza Mona Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Lots of clouds, even a couple of uh, maybe brighter spots. It's kind of encouraging. Watch out for a hint of fog, especially out to the west in the next few hours. 70 degrees right now, about 30 above normal, believe it or not. 76 at noon, 80 high temperature. The record's 81. It's going to be a close call. Same thing tomorrow then. This time Saturday morning, the the December weather is going to come back in here. It's going to be wet. It's going to be windy Saturday and very chilly Saturday and Sunday. All right, we'll get ready. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And thank you guys for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next.